What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we were attempting to swap a 2022 Ford F250 12 inch screen into my dash. It's a Sync 4 screen and it only works in the 2022s. I've seen some posts online of people doing it. A lot of people told me that it was impossible to do and just to put everything back to stock. And I almost believed them until we did a little bit more research. So in this video, we're gonna get this thing swapped. We're gonna get it working, but it's gonna take a lot of stuff. We gotta figure it out. So, and what you will see here is actually a 2018 Platinum harness, which has heated and cooled seats, all of the fancy things that we need, factory subwoofer, the dual climate control box, all that other stuff. And what you see right here is a pair of Platinum seats. I have the Platinum dash over here as well because we need to take that harness out of that and then put it into that shell. Also, we have the Platinum console too. And look at this. This is the key that doesn't require you to open, like unlock or lock the truck because on these door handles, it actually has the, they call this the easy access or the comfort access or whatever you want to call it. We have a push button start. We have dual climate control. We have all of that type of stuff right there. Uh, also rear platinum seats. He wanted to sell it as a package deal. I was like, can I just buy the harness and the dash harness? He's like, if somebody wants these seats without that, then yes. But if they want the seats, they're probably going to want the same harnesses and everything that you want. If you want them, I'll sell them to you now or after I sell the seats without the harness. My truck's completely apart. I don't want to put it back together in order and then just have to find this harness anyhow. So the goal is right now is we're taking out the 22 harness, my 18 harness, and we're gonna install the 18 platinum harness. We're gonna take the harness out of the 18 platinum dash, put it in the 22 dash, plug things in, rewire a couple things, and effectively, we will have a fully operational truck. All right, so we got the whole new old harness, the 18 harness in. We plugged in the 18 platinum dash with the console because I think there might be like a key reader thing in there because of the push button start. I just want to double check and make sure that everything looks all right. Like start the truck, make sure that it runs, make sure that things work like they're supposed to. I just want to see like some of the features. Does it have like the heated steering wheel? Does it have like the massaging seats? Stuff like that that'll come up factory like in the dash right here. I'm curious what's going to happen when we plug into it or when we actually turn it on it'll run and then i guess go from there but yeah harness and everything pretty much everything plugged right in exactly how it's supposed to other than this is a little bit short right here for that lower little seat belt tensioner so it's not starting uh something with the mobilizer not seeing like the right settings or whatever that it's seeing pretty late it's like 12 30. i don't know if foreskin will let you program a mobilizer codes and things like that so we'll kind of figure that stuff Oh, maybe a little bit later, but yeah, for now, these things are powering on and, you know, doing the right thing. It's nice to see, you know, a gauge cluster working in here again. Obviously, this is completely different dash, completely different wiring harness. The real test is going to be once we get this harness in the other dash, everything should technically work exactly how it does, other than the fact that I'm going to be plugging in and rewiring this stuff right here, uh, basically the big old screen in order to... To work so new development i thought i needed a cable so uh, this cable right here which is a j2534 communication network or it's like a two-way programming thing which like some bmws some hondas some mitsubishis volvos jaguars they use it and the 2020 and up fords use it but <laughs> this truck doesn't use it it only uses it for the apim which is the sync so i actually need a to use the ford ids software instead of the fdrs software which is a two-day subscription uh, license that you have to do off of their website so i found a local one on marketplace it's not really that local it's three hours away so in order for me to go pick that up I guess I could go drive and drive something else to go get it. But there's a trailer that is also for sale. We sold that airbagged Max D trailer because you couldn't really haul F-250s and stuff on it. I had some big ideas with that and that didn't really work out. Essentially, it's in the same location. So I need to get this truck running to where I can go pick up the trailer, pick up the thing, take this dash out, put my old dash back in where I could use my key, my key fob, I drive up there, pick up the trailer and then drive home. All right, so it's been two weeks without my truck. How have I, do how have I been doing? Well, you've got about eight doors. Six. Six, do six doors. Six. six doors. Six doors later. Six doors, two dashes, two sets of seats, two just everything. Let's see if it starts. You think it's going to start? Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. How are you doing? Look at that. Well, it does still work, which is good because I was a little concerned after the last time I, you know, I fried things. But this is the my original dash, my original key, my original body control module with the new Lariat cab harness for the floor 
and seats and stuff like that. So the goal is right now is I'm just gonna stick a freaking seat in here, a seat, maybe the console. I'm gonna go pick up that trailer. What do you think? I'm concerned for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little concerned for myself. Bye boys. Well, the interior is kind of back together. I went ahead and I put in the platinum seat. The only windows that work are those two over there. My driver window doesn't work. The thing that does work though, is the massage you can see. So right now, I'm getting an ass massage while I'm driving around the truck with all kinds of wind noise because uh, I didn't put in the weather, the weather stripping in that back door. But we are uh, about 30 minutes away from the trailer that we're going to look at. And then after that, we're going to go pick up the Ford uh, VCM. No AC in this thing too. So it's like 80 degrees. You know, normally I got AC in the trunk, but now no AC. Not really that great of airflow, but I'm getting an ass massage, so that's good. So I'm excited to look at this trailer. Excited to get this truck back together. Your destination is on the left. All right, so just picked up the new trailer. So 28 foot max D. The last one I had was a 24 foot airbag trailer. This one is actually a hydraulic tilt and it tilts back pretty good so that, you know, the angle isn't super, super aggressive right here. And also I think I should be able to fit two cars on it. Uh, 7,000 pound torsion axles, winch on it that's wireless. We got two 12,000 pound drop decks in the front and a freaking eight inch frame right there. This thing is heavy. I think it weighs 4,900 pounds. Now uh, we're gonna hop back in uh, in the old truck i'm gonna go sell some door panels and then uh i got my platinum seat with my butt massager and uh we're gonna head home what do you think well, let me let me do that buddy let me, let me hit it up there you go go ahead go ahead two cars huh maybe well i remember the red one we had to park the front bumper over well so i think i might have a little dilemma with that come walk up here with me so this is 28 feet of just freaking pure rollback goodness low car friendly i think it's seems like fairly it. fairly low car. Gonna... i think wow. like if i wanted to get like a lamborghini with a big old front lip i think the some wood race ramps like the big race ramps oh, like this the, thing would yeah. literally you could drive anything up on it so i think if you were to get like my corvette or something yeah. to not like have to pull the lip or do any weird stuff You'd have to do some race ramps, but this thing would like, it would fit everything. But look at that. Drive over fenders, 102 inches wide, 82 and a half between the fenders. Wireless winch that looks a little bad, but it actually still works. In order to get two cars on here with the last trailer, it was 30 feet. And we had to pull the tires up to here. You technically lose out on probably two or three feet because the bumper can only go to right there. A lot of guys who have like uh, three car haulers, like a gooseneck, they'll actually do like a hinge. So it would be like another additional ramp that goes right here that has a hinge and it would fold this way, but then you could fold it backwards and then that would almost give you the, the effect of having some wood, but then also you'd be able to stick a car, you know, put the back tire a foot off the back and then I think that we would be able to get, get everything done. But uh, effectively this three trailers in one trailer, haul anything, literally a rollback that you could hook up to any truck. You know, I, I definitely understand <coughs> your reasoning behind it and I think with a little bit of modification, we can make it work. I think so too. If we want, we could use it as a jump too. A little ranger ramp. I kind of want to pull a car on it and see how it looks. Like get, see if we can fit two. Let's pull the here, pull the here. pull the pull cobalt the and the sob up there. All right, now back up and just launch it. Doing a quick little test fit to see if two cars will fit. I don't I don't think it's gonna fit because technically I think the tires need to be in order to fit. Might have to figure out a solution for the winch. So Charles is gonna pull up the old slow bolt on the back and we're gonna see just how much room we need. All right, so technically, technically we have two cars on it. Technically. technically we have two cars. Just the whole back of this thing is hanging on. They're on there, okay? That's all you need to know is they are on there. Buddy, what a beautiful sight that is. Charles's car, Cobalt SS, this thing is a freaking ripper. Did you say SS? Yep, uh, but it fits, the back is hanging off of the back, obviously. But this is an average size car. I'd say that's probably about the size. Okay, but Evo Wagon, that's that's an average size car too. Uh, but now our issue right now is that this is tall. So if we had a truck, it'd be fine. It would go over this. But with a low car, you run into the winch, you run into this stuff. So we're trying to debate if we put the winch underneath, use some snatch blocks, and then build like a little bit of a ramp system to get up right here. And I think we would be, we would be golden. 
Yep. Charles, how you doing? Oh, technically, I didn't even go all the way down. I'm testing and get this guy off here. So I think tonight is the night. The other day we bought the trailer. It's been a couple days. Got stuck on the side of the road uh, in the last video with the drift thing because something fuse pop thing. Truck has been fine. Been driving a couple of days. No issues with it other than the fact that nothing works uh, because we have my 18 dash back in it. My original dash with my original key because I needed my truck. When we put in the 18 platinum dash with the push to start key right here, we couldn't program anything the other night because we only had one key. I went ahead and I bought this. This was the marketplace find. So we have the VCM2, which that's an OEM one from Ford. That is what we need to run the IDS software, which is going to allow us into the PATS anti-theft system on the truck to reset the immobilizer code and essentially use push button start keys uh, in this dash with this body control module with my ECU out of my truck. Dad is over here tonight pulling out the dash for probably about this. I think this is the sixth time we've had a dash in here. All right, so. boys. So after what seemed like hours of uh, messing with the Ford IDS program and going back and forth with this guy over team viewer, check this out. We have my key right here. A brand new key. Look at this. Uh -huh. Check that out. You hop in digital cluster, dual climate control. And the most importantly, we have push button start. Basically what I had to do was go into the PATS, which is like the anti-theft system that Ford has, and go and do a perimeter, parameter, perimeter, whatever reset on it, and then just program two new keys, which I had to buy this key off of eBay. I went ahead and bought just a brand new OEM one. Uh, it's like 80 bucks. And I went ahead and I had them cut the key to actually match the door lock on the truck too. So that way, you know, when I just go and, and open that thing, I just pull that key out. Uh, I did have one issue is I still had my old antenna in the truck, the smaller one right here. So this is like the antenna for the, the key fob. And this is actually right back here behind the headliner. So the truck actually wasn't locking or unlocking. And I just thought, and I was like, okay, the other harness that I had, it came with this thing and it was actually like twice the size. And I'm assuming that's from the perimeter type of stuff. So right, another night back at it. Uh, so I drove the truck to the shop today. Dual climate control works, the backup camera works, the heated, cooled, massaging seats, all that stuff works. The ambient lighting in this thing works. Everything seems to work. The only thing that doesn't work right now is the, the driver's side window switch. I think something's messed up with that or I broke something. Now is the time that everything is confirmed to work. We're gonna go ahead and pull this platinum dash out, the 17 or 18 platinum dash out. We're gonna take the wiring harness out of it. We're gonna put it in the 22 dash, redo a couple of the pins and stuff right here on the APIM connector, which is the connector that goes on the back side of the 12 inch screen, which was the whole point of this uh, swap in the first place. You put one dash in, you put one dash out, you put another dash in and you shake it all about, I guess. <laughs> it's just crazy how many times the dash has been in and out of this freaking thing. But this hopefully should be the last time that this dash is going back in it. It's crazy how deep I am into this thing, but should be able to recover some good money out of these pieces, you know, the console, the seats and all that other stuff. And I'm just super stoked to get this thing finally back together. And I'm sure my dad, are you excited? Yep. You don't have to stay over here until one in the morning helping me on this freaking stupid thing. Pull the dash and put the new one and get it done.
we got all of the old wiring back in the new dash with the new steering column, the old stereo, the new climate control buttons, the old this thing. What I think this controls a lot of like the cameras and stuff. This is the AIPM connector right here. And uh, I think I have to depend some stuff on it. Actually on the back screen, this is a connector that powers the screen. And then here is a connector. This actually goes to the back of that guy right there. Those are things that are not in this wiring harness. So I went ahead and ran a wire for some 12 volt that I will just give right there. I also have a ground already ready. So basically these things need power and ground. This guy right here, I believe that purple wire or maybe it's the other one. I have to run it as a reference basically to the AIPM for like the LIN signal. Cause essentially this is just like a CAN keyboard. You know, everything is controlled via, via one wire instead of like 20 wires going into that thing so that will plug into the back of this and then we should uh should technically be good to go all right so dash is back in the truck now we're doing a little bit of the wiring so right here i have the aipm connector which is basically the computer for the screen so you can see these two wires 54 and 53 which are the two ones on the end are actually a can bus so with the new 2022 screen it doesn't run on a can bus system it runs on like an hs speed so it's a different network. So if you have the CAN bus connected to it, it won't boot up. And then you can see this wire right here. This is pin 44. And what that goes off of is uh, the audio control on the front, which is basically this guy right here. So power ground and then that, and then that should work. Uh, AIPM connector right here. And so it will have the signal going into here on pin 44 to tell it to turn on or basically power skip you know to all of that stuff right there and then this screen actually bolts onto the back of that it has its own power connector right there on the right side and it plugs into this pink connector right there power ground it power ground to the switch and run that and technically we're done i hope i'm gonna run some wires and we're gonna see uh we're see if this thing freaking boots up turns on and doesn't melt down all right, boys, so it has been a couple days living with the new screen. Everything seems to be working good other than the backup camera. So the backup camera plugs on this new screen are different. There's like an IPMB, which is like the little module for the cameras. My truck technically did not have any cameras. Uh, it only had the rear view camera and there was no IPMB. I think that's like the little control module for cameras on this 2022 harness this is what it looks like right there this connector on the back that looks a little funny a little connector right here since 17 platinum harness had that as well the cameras actually worked or the camera my rear view camera when i had the 18 platinum dash in it but it also had the older style apim which is you know basically the brain or the computer of everything this has the newer style one and I think it wants to talk to that thing. So I'm gonna be pretty bummed if I did all, like everything. My backup camera doesn't work because backing up to trailers is no fun. Uh, with, I mean, literally you have to, if you're doing it by yourself, which I back up to trailers a lot by myself, it's like in, out, in, out, in, out. But that's not what we're gonna mess with tonight. The main thing that I would like to do is actually get the rest of the interior back together. As you can see right now, we don't have any carpet. We're missing a seat. We just have the platinum seats in here. I do like the platinum seats, but I wish they were cleaner. You can see like the edges right here have a little bit of wear right here. The driver's side is my main concern. You can see that whole piece kind of going up the back. It has a decent little scratch and stuff right here. Not terrible, but like if these were the only seats that I had, I would run them. But we do have these seats, which these are the 22 Lariat seats, which are pretty much brand new. I think the truck had like 9,000 miles on it. This console right here too, you could see has a bunch of little dents and stuff in it. Uh, the platinum console. Over here, you could see this is the, the Lariat console out of the 22. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this one in. It's in a lot better shape. This top piece is nicer. This piece is nicer. This actually matches the trim of the interior. And another thing that I want to swap out is actually the steering wheel. So the steering wheel kind of has been used. You could feel it's like smooth. It's like almost been polished by somebody's hand. Again, you could kind of see some dents and stuff right there in that platinum finish. And that doesn't match this interior or that stuff right there. Swap the steering wheel, swap the console, swap the seats. I actually need to take the wiring harness out of this console, put it into this console because this one does not have the proximity key. Pretty stoked the fact that, you know, you just grab your key, you get up here, you push the button, bam, fires right up.
Oh, also with these seats, it is kind of cool. It has some ambient lighting uh, for the Platinum, so it actually like lights up the floor. Kind of a cool feature. Not like I really care a whole lot for the, the seats in the back, but in the front, it actually lights up the footwell as well. So maybe see if I could stick that on these other seats as well. But overall, the main thing I wanna do right now is go ahead and get the carpet back in here. So I'm gonna start vacuuming up this stuff, get all the seats back out of it, and then start swapping the console and stuff. Here we go boys so hop in it push the brake hit the button you got the nice beautiful screen right here click this guy on there we go got the nice temperature heated cooled seats uh, everything comes up on the dash so like when you change the temperature it adjusts it stereo bumps we have everything on the dash right there went ahead and programmed my mileage on it and uh, cause you could actually go up with the mileage on Forescan, but you cannot go down. So I was able to program this, uh, this to my mileage. Got the Lariat seats installed, cleaned up. These things look super, super nice. I like the way these ones look. They're just in a lot better shape than the Platinum ones. Console's all cleaned up, truck is all clean. This thing is pretty much done. Overall cost, when I initially purchased the dash, the seats, the harness and everything, it's about $5,000. As of right now, I would say once I sell the Platinum Dash, the seats and some of the other stuff, I'll probably break even. So maybe the harness should be kind of a wash, but I would have probably had about another thousand to $1,500 in um, harnesses to swap everything. Huge shout out to Sonny50. He's a guy on uh, one of the F-150 forums and he has an Instagram as well. He actually helped me out quite a bit on this thing, just asking him questions and you know making sure that I had it. And he also did a full write-up or kind of a mini write-up in his build thread on the F-150 forum. So shout out to him. Wouldn't have been able to do this without him because this was like a secret thing that nobody wanted to tell you how to do. He just did it a couple weeks ago and shared the information so super appreciative to him i gotta get listing all this stuff for sale let me know what you guys think about this thing i almost freaking gave up on it but uh, i'm glad i didn't and i'm stoked to take some long road trips in this thing i don't know it's gonna be hard though because you just want to look at the, the big pretty screen instead of looking at the road but appreciate you guys watching leave a comment and let me know what you think see you in the next one